Oh, the rush is always, always the last, like coming up with the last comment because I actually think about those punchlines and I, I search for something that surprises me. And when I have that, it just feels um, kind of exhilarating. Welcome, thank you. Um, Hello, how are you? I'm honored. Yeah, well, we're honored. I can't believe you showed up, to be honest with you. But um, the, the gentleman I will, I was thinking when I was kind of doing a little research here with the team, but for me, can I say the Banksy of the internet? Can I say that? <laughs> oh, I mean, yes, uh, that would be that would be extremely flattering, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with it. So you're posting on all these things all across the internet, and then did you do the subreddit or did somebody else do it? Oh. Uh, somebody else did it. I had been doing this for about three or four years with a very tiny audience. I would say mostly my friends and a few people on Tumblr, but um, somehow, you know, just like these things just happen uh, organically, it just popped up on Reddit, made it to the front page and, right. um, you know, somebody created a dedicated subreddit for it. And, uh, and it's, it's ballooned um, into a it's, it's so unwieldy that I'm a moderator on, I never even, <laughs> I don't right. even uh, bother anymore. You know, you're known as the sort of this incredible troll, if you will, on the internet. That's how other people describe you. But what what are what are you doing, and what were you doing, and why did you do it in the beginning? I guess I would describe what I'm doing as I'm drawn to toxic comment sections on the internet, and I use it sort of as a tool for some really absurd interactions, and uh, that I just share that, and surprisingly, people, you know, fall for the most. I would think unbelievable characters, <laughs> you know? Um, right. And right. so to, to sort of scratch that itch of wanting to talk to people, but also want to be civil <laughs> for a change, I, I was like, wow, there's this uh, spaces underneath uh, news stories that I like to read where people mm -hmm. kind of continue the conversation as they say. For me, it was, it was just darkly funny realization that it was the most toxic, like unnecessarily cruel interactions I was like, wow, what's, what's going on here? This is this is wild. And it and for me, the, the most absurd, funny uh, punchline of this whole thing, news organizations back in the day thought, oh, you know, people were going to connect and, and sort of keep the conversation going. And right. instead, adults are just slinging mud at each other. And it, it's to me, that's really darkly comical. Since everybody wants to call each other stupid anyway, right. I would sort of present them with the biggest moron I could, I could think of and just have right. them let it go at me. And then hopefully sort of sneak in uh, an absurd twisty punchline at the end. And that's sort of the formula. So, okay, you're talking about the Bush years, the Obama years, but, you know, that gives way to much okay. darker period. Yeah, you know? then it gets, what yeah, happens? That was quaint. That was no. quaint. Then what happened? Yeah, there were spaces kind of like that back then that were, you know, on more obscure sites like, you know, Breitbart or um, Fox Nation was one that was, but it hadn't really bled over into what we have now. Um I would always avoid those places because one, I think that level of darkness and abuse is just less valuable as comedic fodder. I mean, it, it's, right. it's literally disgusting to read. Right. Um, it's, it's a lot better to have people that are just, just rude, you know, but not, you know, not telling you to go kill yourself, just, just right. calling you like relatively like innocent names, like dimwit, you know, <laughs> are you, are you doing stand up that kind of thing? Um, it's more like a, it's sort of a more pretentious version of that where I'm just I just read a story that I wrote. Right. <laughs> you know, just it's just a stage or not a stage reading, but um, yeah, just, right. just a faux dramatic reading. Like I, I act very, very serious and everything I say is complete nonsense. Right. So just a lot of pretzel logic and, and, and uh, basically the same kind of humor that I use online. So sharks have a way of turning today's friend into tomorrow's chum. So what's the what's the setup for that? Like, how do you get to that? Is it because the guy is is um, horsey surprises? That that's you, I guess, with the little horse. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's the that's my that's been my go-to avatar for years. Um, right. Yeah, I mean that's I guess I guess I'm sort of um, a more you know dorky version of the the weird Twitter thing that right. you know that we had in the beginning of theory. So yeah, I I'll just come up with stuff like that. That's complete nonsense. A little bit of wordplay and. A lot of, to be honest, my, my Twitter feed is, is a lot of um, just like boredom, you know, things I throw out there. And um, the stuff I really think about is the stuff I do in comment sections because it, there's a bit more of a structure to it. Some of these threads go on. I mean, like this one, I was just telling my students that biologically speaking, heterosexual behavior is a true mark of deviancy. Let's hope that America joins the rest of the civilized world. 
and then it goes on for a long time. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really poking a hornet's nest there because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely trying to get God fearing uh, homophobes after me. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, yeah, but let's talk about that. You want to get the sort of, you know, homophobes out, homophobes out to, to what end? Like, is it to sort of challenge or because you're you're riling them up on a public forum. And so is there intention around it or is it just a sort of is there something un- underneath that or is it just your own reaction to the outrageous point of view that we see expressed on the internet, which is sometimes mind blowing, but yeah. right? what, what yeah. is, is there something else there? I definitely don't have a conscious altruistic intent. I think sometimes, you know, maybe there was a little bit of uh, barb at the end of the tail on that one, which was kind of unusual. You could tell I was a little angry, but uh, yeah, it, it's more just, you know, it's more just kind of my general sense of bafflement at um, the way people um, went to argue on online. Cause I, I imagine in person or, they can't be like that. They can't be that bad. Um, right. It, so, it, 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 or they can. Just, but, yeah, anyway. so, most folks spent their pandemic checks on tacky above ground trampolines. Now, do you remember what response you got to that? Oh, yeah. That was, uh, well, that's, I think that's another tweet. Um, and so my tweets don't tend to be changed. They just tend to be sort of one off. Oh, right. Right, right, right. What about um, using the word potato shells? In the comment section, instead of potato skins. <laughs> that's to be honest. That's the kind of stuff I like to do more so than the um, the stuff that kind of stirs up my own ire while I'm right. writing it. Um, right. Yeah, I, I just love uh, one of the things I love to do when I write. If you can call what I do writing, um, I love to just tweak words, have vernacular that's a little unreal, but not quite obviously so, and. Um, and play with cadence and and just find little places to toss an oddity and right. so yeah calling referring to potato skins as potato shells as sort of a sweet dopey old man i, I just found to be like cartoonishly silly um, and how did people respond oh very uh, very self-righteous about that they're called skins you know like right. it, it, they had to, they couldn't let that go you know they had right. to come out and, and be there was a need to say i told you so and do you know it all right um in these sections now with woke well culture i'm you can see me i'm doing giving you air quotes here uh it's even you know more every word is scrutinized more do you think about that or do you not are you still have that spirit of just you're just going to put it out there you know do you do you i guess censor yourself oh i definitely try never never to do that but i'm also aware that a lot where people are aware of me and, and do scrutinize my stuff and do criticize me for being you know, not as good as I was last year or something. <laughs> so uh, they're, but, you know, you know, they're trolling you now. Yeah. The, yeah. There is, it, well, these are, these are fans, dude. Yeah. Um, so you just can't think of stuff like that. And um, if you're familiar with Patricia Lockwood, she's, she's from the old days of weird Twitter. And now she's just like awesome novelist, but right. she had a quote that I read the other day where, you know, she said, you know, when you become viral online, people will try to pour you into a certain shape mm-hmm. and then it's your, and that's okay. It's just your job to like break out of that if it because otherwise your your creativity is going to calcify. You're you're basically going to be um, writing like a brand marketer rather than um, you know the, a, an artist. Right now, how do they how do how do the things make it to the subreddit? Because it's like you know, are you just going around and going? Well, I'm on Amazon. I'm going to read some of these reviews. I'm over here in this place. I'm going to you know because how do they figure out where you are and then get it to the subreddit? Most people don't see my stuff in the wild, you hmm. know, on, on a random like Washington Post article. Yes. I, I'm pretty sure they see it because I post it on my own Twitter account or my own wow. um, Facebook page. So and then, do you ever, and do then you it'll ever, leapfrog over to Reddit. So do you ever feel like, yeah, I'm not going to put that one on or? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of failed attempts out there because it relies on other people to um, be involved unawares. Right. And if nobody responds, there's no joke. Um, that's why I don't think my Twitter is nearly as funny because um, they're just one offs. There's no, there isn't that like fun clownish dance between real people and me, you know, with all this unnecessary outrage happening. If people don't respond, um, then uh, I just leave them to die out, die on the vine. These, these comments I make. You know, is it is it trying to take a boring thing and make it interesting or shake it up? Like, how do you think of it? Yeah, it's it's it's. It's, it's definitely, this came out of me trying to make something that was uh, boring, um, vaguely depressing, definitely all around disappointing and, and turn it into um, something 
that could be like a source of really sunny absurdity. It, it, where do you get the rush of it? Is it when you do it in the response to what you're actually doing, and then you, you know, post it on to you post it on from there? Uh, the rush, oh, the rush is always, always the last like coming up with the last comment because I actually think about those punchlines, and um, and I, I search for something that surprises me, and when I have that, um, it just feels um, kind of exhilarating. It, it's always the rush for me is always the you know, the punchline. And of course, it, it's always really gratifying if people like what you do when, when you post it online, but, um, you know, to like Reddit or something. But, but for me, the actual thrill is that that moment of, you know, coming up with something when you thought, oh, I can't think of anything funny for this. And then it pops into your head. And somewhere I read, I think that you were a copywriter somewhere. Is that like at an advertising agency or something? Um, I was uh, in an advertising agency for um, a couple of years. I've been with Comedy Central and, and Viacom for uh, several years now um, doing other stuff. So, you know, um, without being so specific about it, did, does the writing of this help you with the writing of that? One thing that this goofy hobby has done for my writing skills is um, just becoming really obsessed with the economy of language. And because mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, things are a lot funnier if there's sometimes just too, too fewer syllables. Right. Um, so I think about cadence and conciseness and, uh, and also specific, like really crafting a very specific voice. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So that's definitely helpful for work. I have a couple of, I have a couple of questions about that. Cause you, do you feel like, do you, um, depending on who you're going after or what you're working on a brand as opposed to a person, are you changing that character? Are you getting into character? You know, you were, did theater arts. Um, and so you know, are you getting into, are you creating a character that's responding like in your mind or is it always fixed? I mean, it's always the same name. I mean, you know, it's Ken M like, it's always the same thing, but are there, are you falling into different characters? Oh yeah. It can, it can be confusing because I tend to use the same avatars and uh, it's always Ken M, but yes, I do have a few different characters that I like to use. The one I'm most known for is the, I, I call him the, um, the sweet geriatric moron. Mm -hmm. um, you know, instead of mimicking you know, somebody who has a really poor grasp of the language, I go the other way because there, there's something a little psychotic about taking, adopting this really pretentious sort of faux academic voice yeah. in a place as casual as a comic section on the internet. You just sound like a lunatic if you start, you know, speaking like, you know, you're writing a doctoral thesis or something. And um, I love that too, because that pretension turns people off. <laughs> Yeah. And also trigger some, uh, you know, people want to definitely call you an idiot if you if you sound like you think you're smarter than them. Yeah. So it's the town yeah, square. Like it's the lot. town square. I was just thinking of we once had a guest on it's talking about Shakespeare. And I was just thinking about like people start yelling at the audience. And, and it, it, you're right. It's more of a it's more of a response. Like most comments when they're, they're great, people are just responding in real time emotionally, whatever at each other is is and, they, and people lose sight of the actual article or the story that was originally up there, right? And they get lost down the rabbit hole. So do you, right. you know, how do you bring them back to the to the story? It's actually really fun when it goes off the reservation and it just continues to get farther away from it to where it's like, we can't believe we're talking about this now. Um, like what, one good example of that is there was an article, it was like, it was like the 10, it was like a good housekeeping article. It was like the 10 best juicers for 2014 and something like that. I read that, I read that just so you know. <laughs> Oh, you did. <laughs> okay. And, and I, I responded with, um, it was like another machine that will put hardworking Americans out of work. Thanks, Obama. And, um, and then it turned into this huge thing about Obama from other people. And nobody's talking about juicers anymore. Yeah. And it's like this innocuous article. It's, you know, it's a little lighthearted bit of clickbait. And all of a sudden we're talking politics. So I, I just thought that was really, again, it, I call it like, um, what it feels like a really absurd dance and people aren't even aware they're part of it. It, it just, uh, that's a really wonderful joke to me, <laughs> that right. dynamic, you know, it's just so absurd. Right. Now, did you ever listen to Phil Henry? You heard that show? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I like his show a lot. I love his, his, his character voice skills are off the charts. Now is that sort of a inspiration in a way? Cause he's just always writing these crazy characters, you know? You know, I found out about him two years ago because people kept asking me if I liked him. Right. And I was like, and I was like, now I, I was, like, yeah, I definitely like him. Yeah. Um, I like a lot of, a lot of like sort of trickster comedians um, yeah. in general, whether it's Andy Kaufman or, or 
So this, this work that you do, which I will call it work, whether you're getting paid for it or not, I don't know. We don't have to ask that, but is that a hobby or is this like, are you, is this really what you're meant to be doing or it's a way to work, work out or, you know, exercise practice, which then goes into the, your other writing and uh, improv or other skills, like writing short stories or ad copy or whatever. Like, where do you see oh. this work? Well, um, actually, I do have, I have a bit of a manager who is telling, who did, she heard about this interview. She's like, make sure you tell them you're coming out with a book this year. Cause that's, okay. that's the goal of, that's the goal of this year is to have sort of a coffee table book of this type of thing. Right. Um, but, uh, we have yeah, the I, book? oh, it's something like 10 years of online idiocy, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with Ken and- Keep us surprised. One more question, just going back to your book and you know, I was thinking about what you were saying, and then, I don't know, my mind jumped to, like, writers and writerly and Hemingway and economy of words, whatever. I went on a whole, I went on a little trip, but do you think that this sort of, you know, way of, you're something that you've perfected or a way that you, this character and this way of writing, you know, is that going to be affecting the way people are doing humor and writing in the future? Is it part of now our mass communication? You know, we added the TV, we added the radio, we added the internet, you know, are we adding this sort of comment space, which is, you know, anonymous really? And uh, is it? Do you think it's changing the way that that people use the languages, use language? I do think the that space as a venue and as a sort of a medium, you know, comment sections as a medium, mm-hmm. is something that I, I'm seeing more of. And I actually saw somebody do that before I did it. Uh, a really funny guy back when Tumblr was really huge, mm-hmm. um, who went by Tom Oatmeal, um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I can. I, I would love that. I would love if comment sections in general became a place for sort of benevolent absurdity and not, you know, harmful absurdity. Yeah, because I think it has a neutralizing effect. If, yeah. Even if it makes, even if it makes the bad guys just go home, you know, just saying, well, this is no fun anymore. Yeah, you know? well, that yeah, but that takes a little intelligence to not engage. I'm sorry, but it's also people understanding the nuance, but on that note. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> true, yeah. Uh, now, let's, yeah. Give us the name of the subreddit. Oh, I believe it's just, I think it's just like, you know, forward slash Ken M, I believe. Yeah. Okay. I, I think if you just look up Ken M subreddit. We'll, we'll put it on the, in the description. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. thank you so much for, for talking to us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and I, let, us I, I, the book. let us know about the book, okay? The actual name. I will. So I'm very honored to be here. Well, keep it silly out there. Thank you yeah. for trying to make our world a better place. <laughs> That's the perfect thing to say. That's perfect. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. I really, it was so great meeting you. Thanks. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.